Uh, joining me here on Red Alert this time is Jesse, the singer from 10 Years. What's going on, brother? How are you? What's up? How are you doing? Yo, I'm doing good, man. Uh, it's uh, it's nice to finally have you on the show. You know, I've interviewed Brian, I think, uh, two times, and I think when Tater was in the band, I, I interviewed him, uh, gosh, several several yeah. years ago. You know, but um, uh, so it's nice to, to have you actually on. I've covered you guys quite a bit. Uh, You're coming uh, in and Nashville over the years, man, and uh, it's just appreciate your yeah. time. Uh, this is a yeah, yeah, exciting. no problem at all. I, again, man, uh, you, we met uh, we met a couple years ago. I think you guys were actually recording the last album in Nashville, and um, Yep. Keith Wallen was doing a um, a solo thing at the Mercy Lounge, and uh, like I think you guys in like uh, Hailstorm I think was recording at the same time, and uh, we ended up just kind of hanging out at the bar and had a, had a couple drinks and, and hung out. Man, you guys were uh, you guys have always been really cool with me and, and uh, you're really accessible to fans and stuff, so I appreciate it. Oh, dude, it, yeah, I remember that evening. That was that was fun, and it's it's always like it's this many years of doing it, and you, and you meet people and you come back around, and you talk to them again. It's there there's sort of like a unspoken. Um, kind of friendship or camaraderie amongst uh, people in this this industry. So it, it's cool to always run into people and, and catch up and stuff. Yeah, definitely, man. Um, uh, w- before we get started here, we were talking about, uh, you know, obviously you guys are doing the anniversary tour of the Division album, which uh, is 10 years. And I know you guys did the um, the Effect uh, tour um, a couple years ago as well. Is it kind of weird to see all these albums kind of come, you know, you know, 10 years, you know, 15 years, you know, you guys oh, have been yeah. band for you know, 20, <laughs> I guess now it's kind of, it's got to be kind of cool to kind of, kind of come full circle and play a lot of these songs that you, maybe you haven't even played before live. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, I, I would be lying if I was saying it wasn't a challenge. It's definitely a challenge because most of the time when we record these things, we fully immerse ourselves in the writing and recording process in a controlled environment of a studio. And, it's very rare that you you intend or plan on playing the album in its sequence the way it is, you know, on on the record. And right. most of the time it's singles and or it's all out of order. And some songs, like you said, we've never even played. So what we try to do when we do these anniversary things is to pretty much pay homage to to what the album is and try to play it start to finish in order. And the the problem we run into when we we start investigating into what it takes to do it is like so many guitar changes and tunings and like you don't think about this stuff when you're in the middle of creating it and then putting it in an order and so it, it's a, it's labor intensive but to be able to be around this many years to where you can celebrate albums that turn 10 years old you know a decade old that, that's that's awesome because this is a fickle business and some people don't even survive that long so we we just feel honored that we can't well, I think it's cool to go back and revisit. Uh, how many lyrics did you have to look up? Did you have to Google your own lyrics this time around? Like, um, you know, it's it's funny. I'm I'm kind of like, I'll do the karaoke thing to my own stuff, and that's kind of how I prepare myself before we actually do full band rehearsals. I'll just hit play, and it comes back instantly when I'm listening to it. The yep. trick is to try to do it with no like cheat vocals, is what I call it when you when you don't have your your vocals playing to sing along to because if you forget one word it's just a snowball effect and it's like <laughs> brain freeze I, i've done that on stage before or flip flop first verse and second verse so yeah it's just i'm trying to rehearse it enough to where it becomes muscle memory versus thinking about it because the minute i have to think it's it's gonna be a mess <laughs> <laughs> um was there any songs you know during rehearsals where uh you know, you, you get through the lyrics you do a couple rehearsals you go man what the hell was i thinking when i wrote this 10 years ago it was was there any songs off oh, the man. album that kind of brought back some, some well, odd memories for you at all definitely a lot of it i, I when i write lyrics they're a lot of it's very personal and, and and close to the close to the heart and the soul. So some of them are a little more sensitive. Some of them are about family members that passed on or people that struggle with substance abuse or just just heavy things because it allows me to get it off my chest. And some of them were never intended to really be played live. Like the very last track on this album is called "Proud of You," and it's a piano track that ended up being played at um cousin's funeral and it wasn't written to be played there it was just the last time i talked to him it was the song was just like you know whether you win or lose with your own personal struggles and battles i'm proud of you and that's kind of the last thing i could leave with this guy when i when i talked to him and it was almost like foreshadowing or something and it ended up being played at his funeral so that one emotionally is 
really tough. Like, and it's it's good though to sh- to feel those emotions and revisit them to kind of I don't know, like to to it's okay. Like everything doesn't have to always be happy and, and funny and this and that. Sometimes those emotions are, are good to just let out. It's yeah, it lightens the weight on your shoulders a little, a little bit. No, I, I think that's a good point, man. You know, you know, when you write something, you know, it may be in the moment or you know about a, a loved one or whatever the case may be. And you revisit that, or you hear, you know, or you reread it, or, or hear it again, you know, ten years later, or whatever the case may be, you know, it it allows you to reevaluate things from that from a different perspective from where you are mm-hmm. now to where you were then, you know, and I, and I think it's, it's a good perspective to have. It doesn't always have to be sad or happy. Very much so. You know, it allows you, you know, a different yeah. point of view is from your own personal growth looking back. Yeah, you get to look back at where you were, and it kind of you revisit where you were with it, and it gives those memories. But then the fact that you've a decade later, you're you're able to like look at it in, in a different view. And the only other thing that becomes a little bit of a struggle, and I'll I think I remember Maynard said this in interviews. Some other vocals have said this. Well, over time, the human vocal cords, especially with a guy, your range gets lower. So some of that stuff I wrote in my early 20s, the super belting high notes. I'm like, I'm such an asshole to myself, <laughs> <laughs> trying to get up there and do it again. And yeah, some of those it, it takes a little bit of practice to to get that that high note just the way it should be. <laughs> well, uh, ha- having uh, the, the privilege uh, it, to see you live, uh, gosh, I don't know, you know, eight nine times, uh, maybe more at this point. But um, you you always have, have been one of my favorite vocalists live from, from that uh, era of music uh, in the late '90s into the 2000s. You guys are one of the the core bands from that era, if you ask me. But um, you yeah. also are, are very energetic. I have photos of you, like, crowd surfing at Marathon Music Works in Nashville. I mean, <laughs> you're always kind of out, out amongst the people, man. Um, now, you didn't always start doing that. Uh, was that something that, you know, you just kind of started getting more in, you know, maybe a little more uh, secure yeah. with, with yourself as, as a front as a front man? Exactly. Um, when I first started this whole entire thing, I, I stumbled into even being a – quote unquote front man of a band. It was it was more of a some friends of mine that I skateboarded with, played instruments and they were like, Hey, I'm looking for a singer. You wanna give it a shot? And I'm like, I yeah, I'll try. I mean, I grew up going to church and singing in choir very quietly and shy in the background, never up front and the the focal point. So when I first started doing it it was just fun with friends and then the songs actually were coming together and we'd listen back and we're like, man, this is better than we expected. And then when it comes time to jump in a automobile and travel from city to city in front of new crowds, that's a shock when you first do it. It's not just all your friends' faces in the crowd that are always going to support you. It's complete strangers. And what made me decide to just kind of let go in the moment and give that energy and crowd surf and do all that is that, I want to at least when I perform that show and leave that night, know that I was able to just get lost in the moment of that moment instead of it worrying about it being on YouTube or this or that. It's like I want to give people that are there a real like live performance instead of worrying about standing perfectly still and hitting all the notes spot on. It's not a American Idol audition. It's a show where people have paid to see a band they like. So. It's kind of like that punk rock slash Deftones type thing where you just give it your all. Yeah, well, I I, I think uh, rock and roll and live music shouldn't be staged. And you know, as a as a photographer on the side, I see a lot, you know, or I'll see bands, you know, two, three, four times, and like you go see them, and you're like, wait, they did the same thing last tour, like they did the same movements and speech like, and everything. It's, yeah, yeah, it's very choreographed. And I guess there's part of me like I guess I can kind of get it when you know you're doing you know you're on the road and it kind of becomes a a machine for lack of a better word there where you kind of like, all right, we're going to go out and do this thing. Uh, but you guys have always been able to yeah. kind of shelter, you know, break away from that. Do you have uh, have you sustained any injuries uh, that you, recently other than, I know you had some <laughs> medical stuff with the ear, with the ruptured eardrum. Um, so if you want to touch on that yeah. real quick, as far as healing process is concerned, but have you had um, any like on stage injuries you know, that you can remember? Not recently, but yes, in the past, I've, I've pulled a Dave Grohl and fallen off stage a few times. <laughs> it's it's happened, and sometimes it's, you jump up and nothing, no harm, no foul. But the worst one I can remember is way back in like 2005, 2006, um, opening up for 
Mudvayne and I think Se- uh, Seven Dust. And I was just really ambitious, going crazy, climbing up on the 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 whole side scaffolding where the um, the lighting trust that go across the top like way up there and i got up there and was going to jump down to the stage like a crazy person got my foot caught in the lighting rig and had to twist in midair to get my ankle out so i wouldn't break my ankle just landed flat on my back in front of a crowd of people (laughs) from like about i'd say it's probably a good eight to ten foot drop flat on my probably ten feet that one hurt (laughs) hurt the ego and hurt the body work (laughs) you know like separated a rib but you learn from those things. You're like, yeah, yeah. okay, I can still give it energy, but not quite be that reckless. So, and <laughs> you, like you said, or just a second ago about every day, it, it can become groundhog life and it's different city, same show. The more you play the same show, the, the tighter it gets and the more rehearsed it is. But what that allows us to do with our band is the more it's second nature and just natural, we can kind of let loose a little. It doesn't have to be like, and we don't really have the super over the top production where the pyro's going off here, the air cannons. Like when that production gets that grandiose, you kind of have to be staged. You got to know your marks, know where you're standing, or you end up getting burned up like Hetfield. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, you end up in a you know the Michael Jackson Pepsi commercial back in the day when he ends up caught, caught himself mm-hmm. on fire or something. But um, yeah, I yeah. wanted to bring up the, uh, the the ruptured eardrum thing, and I hope you know doing an interview with me doesn't uh, hinder your healing process. But um, no, no, not at all. <laughs> I would. I know you had mentioned. Yeah, I know you're not like a social media person, and uh, I mean, why not? I mean, you're missing out on National Milk Day, Jesse. I mean, come on, man. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, how, how well, is the we, healing? No, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, how's the healing process for you right now? Yeah, it, it it's you know it's it's humbling a little bit to be you got to step back and realize that we're only human, and as you do this for so many years, it's become become an occupational hazard. But it was just kind of a perfect storm that made it happen. It was when I was a child, I had surgery on like tubes in the ears and stuff that created scar tissue young. And then I've always kind of battled with sinus infections. So because I didn't have one incident that just blew the eardrum, it just, it just happened when I was laying in my bunk one evening after a show and it was just a really bad earache. And then in the past, you lay your head on like a a warm heating pad or you do, and, the fluid will drain, and I'm used to that as a child. But this wasn't fluid. It was my eardrum actually rupturing, and when I woke up, it was like in a pool of blood. And it was a wake-up call to realize that when your ears are ringing, when you step off stage and and you ignore it because, ah, it's fine. It's just a loud show. It's like, no, you can do an irreversible damage at some point, and you got to, like, control. that. That's what's good about having in-ear monitors and, and having stuff to control that, and then – kind of dialing it back where it doesn't have to be on a hundred just to get into the moment of the show. So that's kind of what I'm going to have to do is just put it on a lower volume and that particular eardrum, just, just be gentle with it, hopefully. And they're saying it could possibly heal itself if I do that. And it has been, but last year we were on the road for over 230 days. So it's, the doctor even says like that's impossible for your profession for that to heal in that environment. So this year, right now we're currently, um, we, we have the division tour that's a little under a month and then a couple of other random uh, shows. But for the most part, the, I'd say the better half of um, 19 is going to be writing new music and working on new music. And that'll also allow that eardrum to, to catch up and heal because we won't be in that loud concert situation every night well i appreciate you uh shedding a little light on it and, and talking talking with me about it and uh i'm looking forward to uh, to, to you know, you you know having a little downtime i'm sure is nice be home with the family and you know get back to uh you know writing and, and recording at the middle of this year as well uh we, before we got started we were talking about ship uh which is the the craziest party boat there is i think um we, yeah. We've done we've done some you know correspondent stuff with some uh, some local bands from here in Nashville. You know the Dead Deads. I know um, they've actually done some interview stuff uh, for the podcast on the boat. You guys have done some touring w- with those ladies. Um, talk about you know some of your experiences, your past experiences on Shiprocked, and what do you expect this time around? You know they've gotten that thing to a, a really really well oiled uh, fun machine. I mean it's the we did the very first one 
that was ever created. And it was funny because when you're starting something new, you got to kind of build it up. And it sold pretty well, and it was it was it was nice. But they didn't sell the whole ship out, so they I guess they put deals on for families at cut rates. So it was really a little bizarre because the first one had like children and people in their 70s, 80s, 90s on the boat with <laughs> like these this crazy rock crowd. So it was yeah. a little, there were uncomfortable moments of like people just cussing in front of children and he's like, <laughs> oh, but, but now it's, it's grown to this thing where people totally look forward to it. And ship rock is exactly whatever you want it to be. I know that's a, a vague answer. It's kind of like Vegas where if you want to just really, really let go and go for it, and you have the energy to do so, you can. Or if you want to sit back and just relax, you can. But it, it has a little bit of everything. But for us, I had to, I mean, this will be our fourth time doing it, learn the hard way that I can't drink every drink that people offer me. I appreciate it. <laughs> but it's like the arrows coming out of the sky from 300. Yeah. yeah. It's going gonna, it's gonna to kill me. So. I've learned now just to hold a drink and just be like, I'm good, thank you. And Because in, in the early stages, I've, I've definitely woken up with some, some blurry spots going, what happened to myself? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Dude, are we at port yet? <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. Where, what? Are we on a plane? <laughs> Yeah, Jesse. Well, I, I know you guys are uh, are gonna put on a hell of a show there, and I've, you know, the uh, just from you know people we've had on, you know, doing interviews on the boat and stories that have come back, and it's always it's always a wild time. So if you're gonna be on the boat and you listen to this interview, you enjoy, and uh, you know, may may your liver survive the trip. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, water. that's that's pretty much all I have for. You. I know you guys are gonna be at the Cowan, uh, which is a relatively new venue in Nashville, um, right attached next to a Top Golf. So you guys are gonna get some golfing in, I, I would assume, before the show here in Nashville on the 22nd. Um, I'll give it a shot. Our uh, our old bass player um, was an avid golf player. He he's going to be out there, and he, it's fun to watch people that are good at what they know how to do. But watching me swing a golf club is probably worse than Happy Gilmore. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just I, I'll I'll get on the driving range and try to knock it as far as I can, or or maybe putt putt. But I by no means am a golfer. <laughs> Yeah, same here. I, I would probably be right along the lines of like Charles Barkley swinging a golf club. I'm right in that area, you know. Yeah. So, um, yeah. You know, like, get me on a basketball court Ray or Charles. a football field or something, <laughs> I could do it. But swinging a club, I'm like you know, this weird hitch, weird thing swing, you know. But uh, well, uh, Jesse, um, again, yeah. my man, uh, it's it's nice to, to finally get a chance to, to talk with you a little bit, and I appreciate your time. Uh, is there anything you want to say in closing? Uh, just you know, we we really want to thank everybody that supported us for so long, and. It is truly an honor to be able to, to do these anniversary tours for these albums that are over a decade old. So we appreciate it. Excited to be on Ship Rock. We thank you guys for supporting us all these years. We hope to see you out there. Awesome. Um, if you had to pick one favorite song right now off the Division album, what would it be? Division. Oh, man. Um, I'm going through them right now myself. And just there's a difference between ones that are fun to perform and then ones that are fun to um, – like that are meaningful I'd, I'd say performing them uh you know I, I like the heavy ones i like the the russian roulette or um all your lives the emotional one would would definitely be proud of you because of what i said earlier about it being about a family member passing so it, the album itself holds a very sentimental place for the entire band so we're we're excited to get into it yeah, man, I'm looking forward to catching you guys here uh, January in Nashville. And uh, just again, uh, thanks for time. It is uh, 10 years here on Revelator.